Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Bearded IT Dad, where we give you advice and insight on how to grow your career in the IT field. My name's Dakota. I am currently the Director of Network Operations for a local internet service provider. And tonight, I wanted to talk about what I would do different if I had to start all over knowing what I know now. Uh, you know, hopefully we're... Can you guys hear and see me okay? Really quick, let me know if you can uh, see me okay. I'm, looks like we might not be broadcasting. You can hear me, but can't see me. That is weird. Let's just re Okay, hopefully you, can, you guys can see me now. There we go. <laughs> go figure. All right, how, how is everyone doing? Of course, we had to have some technical difficulties tonight. Where, where is all of you tuning in from this evening? I always like to see where um, the audience is tuning in from. It's always really cool. The IT Mark, welcome. You can you can hear me, but okay, you guys can all see me. Welcome, guys. So let's just start on over. My name's Dakota. I am currently the director of network operations for a local ISP. And I want to talk a little bit about if I was to start over today in today's in today's employment, you know, in today's climate, what I would do different. Um you know, knowing that I know what I know now, if I was to start all over, what would I do different? Um, you know, I've had a very interesting journey into the IT field. If you guys have tuned in before, you've probably heard my story. Before I got into IT, I was a bulldozer operator. I uh, I worked manufacturing jobs. Um, I used to work at AutoZone. Uh, I never, before IT, I never really had much IT background. Um, and you know, uh, I uh, I just got tired of doing a job to put food on the table. I know some of you can probably relate to this. Like you go to work, and you just you can't wait for the day to be over. You you just are miserable there. Um, and but you keep on doing it because you know you you got to provide for your family. You got to pay bills you got to have a roof over your head and it gets frustrating and um it leads to depression and it just can be really really tough um and that's where i was um you know i was driving a bulldozer it was it was great money don't get me wrong i was making like seventy thousand dollars a year just sitting on my butt in a bulldozer all day and you know this was a luxurious bulldozer it was brand new but I just wasn't being mentally challenged. And it just, I got so depressed and so miserable and my anxiety got so bad. Um, I, I had to make a change. And I decided to get into IT. And uh, Paul, you're asking what what model dozer? I primarily drove um, a Caterpillar D10T, uh, but I also drove a D9T and a D9L. Um, but 90% of the time I was in a brand spanking new, I want to say it was like, um, at the time it was like a 2015, uh, D10T. So big. I mean, we're talking like two story house on tracks. This thing was huge. Um, but anywho, uh, so probably much like some of you guys, I turned to YouTube, um, just to kind of look at different ways to make a living and, I watched the video and it just kind of sparked in me that, you know, I really like tech. I really like working with computers and stuff like that. And I decided to start seeing what it would take to make a switch to the IT career field. Um, and I started studying for certifications and stuff like that, but I never got my certifications before I landed my first job, um, which is, you know, 
it just goes to show you you don't need certifications to land a job in this field but it it taught me something that you know if you are determined and you really want to grow your career you just need to set your mind to it and it is completely achievable um you know if i was to go back and start my career over from ground zero with no experience no certifications what i would do the very day i decided i'm going to make a switch to it i was you know i would just start applying for jobs um you know um i offer career coaching if you guys didn't know and actually i just had a call yesterday with one of the pre people i did career coaching with about a month ago and uh, we actually had a really good talk and you'll probably see it on a future video on the channel but uh you know he was working in it but just kind of felt in a rut and you know i kind of asked him what he had been doing to try to make a change and uh i told him look you just need to go out and start applying i don't care if you feel like you're ready or not you just need to go out there um you know the biggest holdup for so many people is the fear of the unknown they think they are not ready they have that imposter syndrome where you know they they just kind of freeze up on the thought like oh gosh i'm not good enough and you never know, first of all, when you might be the most qualified person to apply for a job. And, you know, just my biggest advice to all of you is if you're looking to make this career change, just go out there and start applying for jobs. JM, hi, I started a as a hardware technician troubleshooting PCs every day. Absolutely. Well, you would be amazing. You'd be amazed how many IT managers and directors don't even know how to get into the BIOS. Well, as a director, I definitely know how to get into the BIOS, but that illustrates a good point. You know, you are more capable than you realize. Um, so if I had to tell myself any pieces of advice, I would just go out and start applying for jobs um, and just start messy, you know, I. I I've, I heard the term starting messy and in relation to like creating YouTube videos. And that's what I did here too. But, you know, that also applies to the IT field. Um, all the skills that you need to learn, you can learn them on the job. There is no reason you have to study, study, study and get all these certifications before you even get a job. Um, you know, you, you can start today. You know, um, winter jolt. Uh, I had a second interview for a penetration tester entry level. I'm now waiting for a job offer. They're currently working on it. <clears throat> I have no certs, just a master's in cyber. I applied to 300 plus jobs. That's crazy. But, you know, that just goes to show you that you just put yourself out there. When does the posture syndrome goes away, go away? You know, I've been in the field for four years. Uh, I've leveled up from, you know, a basic help desk position to a director level role. Um, and I've talked to people who have been in the field for years and it, it doesn't go away. That's something you're going to have to always live with is this imposter syndrome. But what sets, I think, the most successful people apart in the IT field is even those you know those most successful people they get imposter syndrome probably nearly daily but realizing that you know just a you you can do it you know you can just persevere um you know you're in that job for a reason um i know i'm not the most qualified person to be a director and yet i'm doing it on a day-to-day -day basis um you know, just having confidence in yourself that you can work through the problems. You're not expected to know it all. Knowing that in the back of your mind that you're not never expected to know everything. Um, it's a huge relief to getting through that imposter syndrome. Here's another person right here. Tender Warrior 68. My first job was a desktop support without any certifications. The thing is, 
once you kind of once you get your foot in the door to that entry level position and get some experience like a, experience is king in the it field but so once you get into that entry level job and it, keep in mind it might not be the best job you know you might not even enjoy it that much but if you can get that entry level job and build up one to two years of experience on the help desk or that entry level role so many job positions are going to open up to you the doors are going to open because you all of a sudden have on the job experience which is king in this field um and you're going to be able to land you know so many other positions you're going to get so many more interviews once you get that experience so if you're just starting out focus on just getting your foot in the door you know a great thing about the help desk is you get to kind of touch a ton of different technologies and you might come in the field thinking you like cybersecurity, but you get on the help desk and you start dealing with some cybersecurity tasks and realize, gosh, this isn't fun at all, but you really enjoy networking. Um, that happens so many times. So just get your foot in the door. <laughs> What's your personal answer for the classic interview question asking for tour or i'm sorry, I think that's your biggest weakness uh personally mine's procrastination um you know this answer you know, this question you know what is your biggest weakness varies for everyone and you really have to deep down and just be <sighs> candid i guess it's the right word um just be honest honest with yourself and honest with everyone my biggest problem in the it field is superhero syndrome i feel like i have to do it all i feel like i have to be the fix for everything and i'm just going to take on all the organization's it problems and do it all myself that is my biggest struggle and i get overwhelmed and i keep trying to take on more and more tasks while spreading myself thinner and thinner that is my biggest problem um so knowing when to delegate uh, Richard Jolt says soft skills are a uh, help or soft skills help a lot. Soft skills are, I say it time and time again on this channel. Soft skills are your most important skills you will ever have in the IT field. You, you know, customer service skills. If you've worked in a job doing customer service, you can get a job in IT. You know, if you've flipping burgers at McDonald's, if you're bagging groceries at the grocery store, you have what it takes to land a job in the IT field. It is really that simple. Uh, you know, just soft skills is just one of those skills that is really hard to teach. So when an employer sees that you have great communication skills, and they're much more willing to hire you because the technical skills on the, you know, how to do the actual job can be taught on the job, so. The big bald Azure guy, welcome. Yo, 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 hide your wife, hide your kids. The big bald Azure guy and the beard IT dad about to have a crazy few weeks. <laughs> about to craze in a few weeks. Yes, absolutely. The big bald Azure guy, I can't wait to have you, you know, have you back on the channel, do an interview with you. It's going to be a blast. We got so many good interviews coming out, like... I can't, you know, divulge them, but we got a lot of good interviews coming out. Um, really quick, while you guys are all watching, I want to get your opinion on the way the channel's been going. I've been doing a lot more interviews with people in the technology field. Do you like those interviews, or do you want me to go back to my older style videos where I'm talking more about like certain a specific topic? And it's just me talking. What do you guys want to see more on the channel? I do this for you guys, so I'm curious what you guys uh, are interested in. Let me know in the chat. Tender Warrior 68. I've been struggling. I've been in IT for seven and a half years and still struggling with imposter syndrome. I just reminded myself. I just remind myself that you don't need to know it all. I just need to know how to find the answer. Google. Yes. Yes. Like everyone talks about this. Like. It is, you know, they joke about using Google all the time. You know, uh, the definition of IT person is just someone who knows how to use Google well. It's the truth. I'm, Google is such a great resource and it is 100% acceptable. I like, I, I can't stress it enough how 
okay it is to not know something and Google it and figure out the answer. You know, I everyone in the field does it. And if anyone says they don't do that, they're lying to you because no one's an expert with the rate stuff is changing. And yeah, the biggest, the best way to deal with imposter syndrome is just knowing it's okay not to know at all. Just be motivated enough and resourceful enough to be able to find the answers. That's all, that's, that's really what makes great people in the IT field. So I was in a reservation call center when I was hired. Uh, you can teach uh, skills, but they found you can't teach customer service. Absolutely. How do you think recent events with AI will affect the future careers in networking and cybersecurity? You know, I, I think I was talking about this on a stream or two ago. AI is never going to replace any job. But to like, let, let me take that back. AI might replace some jobs, but they're not going to take jobs away from the IT field. What it's going to do is it's going to change those jobs. AI is a tool. That's all it is. It cannot do your job for you. But the people who are going to be the most success, successful in the IT field are going to realize how to leverage AI as a tool. Um, you know, chat GPT. Uh, I use it. I use it on my job. I use it on my YouTube channel. I'd, you know, I'd be lying if I didn't say that I have it help me write some of my YouTube scripts. But the key word is help. It doesn't do the job for me. I don't have it do the job for me. You know, there still takes that human part that I have to, you know, you have to read through like the output and like verify it and customize it to how it's going to work. So the most successful people are going to learn how to utilize AI and leverage it as a tool to one, make their job easier, make their job more efficient and free up time to do bigger picture things. One of my biggest struggles right now is that my current job, uh, I'm just spread so thin. I'm stuck doing all the little stuff and I don't have time to focus on the big picture administrative tasks. And if I could leverage AI more in my role, I could potentially get some of that smaller stuff done so I can focus on those bigger tasks. I really enjoy the interviews because it's good to hear perspective of people actively working in different parts of the industry. Thank you. I really appreciate that. That is really what uh, I'm trying to accomplish with the interviews is just bring different voices in everywhere. Uh, and and uh, we, we interview, we're interviewing people everywhere from, you know, basic help desk, IT support. Like we just had that. Uh, we just released that video uh, last week uh, to CEOs of MSPs coming up here in the next week or two. So, uh, is your job understaffed that has you spread so thin? Is understaff common, understaffing common in IT? Unfortunately, a lot of times, yes. Um, understaffing can be really common in IT because a lot of organizations sometimes have difficulty seeing the return on investment of having an internal IT department or when they finally do have an IT department, you know, it's, it's already, they're already behind. Um, it's hard to justify that person because that person isn't directly creating revenue, but as IT people, we know if a system breaks, if their cash register breaks, their forms are creating, receiving money, they're losing money without us there fixing it. So unfortunately it is very common, uh, at least from what I've seen in the IT industry for some departments to be understaffed. Um, but you learn how to adapt and troubleshoot differently and handle situations. And you, you make the best of it. It's not like a constant struggle. Um, and every organization is different. Bigger organizations that can afford bigger IT departments have the budget and understand. Um, if you work for the smaller organizations, a lot of times they're gonna be a lot more spread thin. You're gonna have to be a jack of all trades, which has its pros and cons. Um, literally, I just talked about this in next week video that's coming out, so. But, you know, start messy, I mean, if you break that down, it really applies to a lot of things in life. 
you know, learning on the fly, you know, put your best foot forward and just start in the IT field. Um, that's my biggest advice to all of you. Um, you know, if you find you're not getting interviews, it's time to take a look at your resume and make some changes and adjustments to your resume. Um, if you're not getting, if you're getting interviews, but not getting job applications, take a step back and it's time to look at your interviewing skills. Maybe you need to do some mock interviews. Um, you know, there's some great YouTubers out there like Kev tech it who runs mock interviews. Um, both Kev tech and I do career coaching where we can, do a mock interview and like go through interview questions and help give you advice on how to answer questions. Um, you know, start looking into things like that. Annika, I hope I pronounced your name right. I'm, I'm sorry if I ever pronounced anyone's name wrong. I'd never mean to. I'm just horrible with names. Annika, thank you for the $2 super chat. More viewers to throw dollars for your time. I really appreciate that. We're actually going to start trying to raise some money. Um, we are going to actually try to do uh, go to Cisco Live this year. And we're uh, actually talking with some brands and stuff, but we're going to, get to try to raise enough funds to make sure and cover expenses uh, so we can attend Cisco Live and kind of bring you some insider knowledge um, in the networking field, because that's one of my favorite topics to talk about. Uh, so again, thank you for the $2 Super Chat. Um, yeah, I mean, if anyone ever wants to support the channel, you can always sign up for a membership. We're gonna actually start offering group coaching. So we offer one-on-one -on -one coaching right now where you and I will sit down for either half an hour or an hour and go over your, what your career goals are, you know, whether it's your resume you want to help with, you're, um, adjusting your LinkedIn profile, um, creating a career plan and path to, you know, like if you have a certain like, hey, I want to make six figures within the next two years. Well, I will sit down with you and say, okay, you need to do this, 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 and this, and get this certification and so on. Um, and we'll create a plan. So I could do that one-on-one. -on -one. You, if you guys are interested in signing up, there's a link down in the description. You can click on that and sign up for a career coaching session. But also, um, if you want to sign up for like a, uh, one of our memberships here on YouTube, um, the higher tier, I think it's going to be $5 and above. Uh, we're going to start offering group coaching calls, which is, uh, once a month, we're going to have a monthly like zoom call and, uh, for an hour and there'll be several of us. And we will talk about some of the struggles you are facing career wise in your career journey and stuff like that. So, um, I, I haven't fully set that up yet. You, so if you sign, but if you sign up here on uh, YouTube or on our Patreon, um, you're gonna be eligible for that service. So, anywho, off topic. Enough talking about me. Um, you know, this IT field is gonna start changing um, again. You know, pre-pandemic, um, the IT field was just kind of on autopilot and cruising along. Jobs were just kind of regularly cycling through. The pandemic hit and there was a huge demand for IT jobs, like IT jobs because everyone went remote. IT jobs went through the roof and everyone and anybody was getting hired. But now that things have calmed down, I think that's, that's starting to taper back. And now we're potentially heading into a recession or according to the government, we're actually already in the recession. Jobs are starting to cut back. We're not seeing jobs go away but the amount of job new jobs in the it field is lessening so you know I, i'm not saying you know people in the it field are losing their jobs i mean some, some inevitably will but we're seeing the amount of new jobs added to the job market decrease again and start to taper back off you know with recessions companies tighten their belts a lot of times tech budgets get tightened with that so you're in doesn't mean now is not a good time to get in tech. And I'm not trying to say this to worry you. I'm trying to say this to prepare you so you can better your skills and make yourself that much more of a valuable candidate. Um, you know, certifications are going to start playing a lot more weight again. You know, if you're looking to get into the field, start studying for like some of your entry level certifications, like 
a plus or ccna uh if you're looking to advance your career you know start studying those certifications you don't necessarily need the certifications to land a job but start studying for them and put those on your resume to help get through the hr screening filters um you know a lot of times that's one of the biggest problems i see especially when i'm going through these coaching calls is someone studying for a certification and they, since they're only studying for it they don't feel like they want to put it on the resume but they're not getting any interviews well it's because those automated hr screening filters aren't seeing those keywords on the resume so it's just tossing it out it's not even landing in front of a human where as soon as they put that they're studying for those certifications um it instantly bumps them into a different pile and they're being seen by those hiring managers uh tender warrior thank you for becoming a true techie that's awesome you know uh this whole membership thing on the channel is um really new we've just got got approved for it through youtube and it's uh it's really awesome and i'm excited because it gives me an opportunity to get back to the community and kind of give some special rewards and prizes and uh it's like, like i said one-on-one -on -one coaching calls and stuff like that um, and it really helps support the channel. It really helps us continue to create great content. Um, like I said, we're looking to go to, um, a, for, probably you're going to go at least go to Cisco live. And then we're also considering possibly being able to go to uh, DEF CON as well. And I plan on bringing the camera along and interviewing other experts in the field and try to get more advice for you guys. Also, you guys, the support goes to our Christmas holiday giveaway. Uh, and if you guys weren't around for that last this last Christmas, we gave to we gave away to you guys fifty thousand dollars worth of IT training. Now, some of that's still being worked out and coming to you guys, but um, we we gave away subscriptions to like platforms like INE, CBT Nuggets, and stuff like that. So, again, thank you so much for you guys' support of the channel. IP config CCNA test tomorrow. We, I wish you the best of luck. Uh, you know, it's CCNA is one of those great exams that is ever evolving. And Cisco really sets the bar when it comes to IT certifications. Um, I just did a video about how the CCNA, I think, is getting ready to be redone again. You know, uh, about three years ago, we saw a whole brand new Cisco CCNA come out. And I think we're about to see some changes in the this year to the CCNA once again. If you guys have any questions at all, uh, please make sure and drop them in the chat and uh, I will answer them. If you're watching this on the replay, put them in the comments below and I will definitely get back to you. You know, um, you know, I was saying earlier that we're, we're getting some possibly some changes in the IT field, but on the same hand, I think it's in a very exciting time to be in IT and the tech field um, with such new technologies coming out and advancements such as into AI and stuff and how those are integrating in the field. It's really kind of going to start changing things again. And like I said, no job is going to go away from AI. It's just you're going to have to learn to adapt and change. You know, things are going to change slightly. So you know it's it's really an exciting time ip config Cisco live and defcom would be an amazing series the content just keeps getting better <laughs> good job on the channel thank you you know i just try to bring the best content to you guys and uh you know try to bring you guys the best advice um i'm curious from everyone who's in here what are some of the like things that interest you the most in IT? You know, is it the cloud? Is it networking, cybersecurity? What excites you guys the most about the IT field? Me, I'm a networking guy, true and true. Like, I've always loved working on networking equipment. Um, you know, it's kind of the, I feel like it's the foundation of everything. All the, you know, for everything to work in IT, it, it hits the network at some point in time, whether it's development apps, it's the cloud, you know, the cloud is just, you know, it's, it's like everyone says it's someone else's data center, but the cloud still has networks. You still have to understand networking, cybersecurity, you know, all in most IT, you know, most threats come in over the network. So it's really interesting. Um, that's, that's what drives me the most. 
IP config, everything I'm focusing on uh, most on network right now, if that answers your question. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think for people just starting out in the IT field, networking is a great place to start because again, like I said, it's kind of the foundational skills you need to have. Um, I highly recommend like anyone getting to IT, uh, like cybersecurity to understand networking fundamentals um, and stuff like that. So definitely that's a great skill to have. Beer IT dad, I am a tech support, uh, excuse me. I'm tech support at my company. I want to apply for a position that requires CCNA. Job closed. Uh, I am wondering if I should even take my CCNA. I want to stay here. Uh, I mean, if you want to move up into a networking position, um, I definitely recommend you take a CCNA. Um, my th thing I would I would look into is if you're interested in applying for a job that requires a CCNA in your company, see if your company, your organization will pay for training and reimburse you for taking the exam. Um, most companies will pay for training like that um especially if it's going to benefit them in a job position you know future job position you, you're going to have so i would talk to your boss and just explain what you're interested in and that you want to get your ccna and see if there's any resources available to either help pay for your training and or pay for your certification but ccna is a great certification to have and i definitely would recommend it if you're it's just, if you're interested in networking Networking cybersecurity. Uh, I'm watching everything I can about both on YouTube. YouTube is a great resource to learn. Absolutely. I'm going over networking in class this week and going over process of how information goes from place to place. All the processes and how fast it happens is really amazing. Absolutely. Uh, all of it but system administration is where my focus is now. All of it but system administration is where I'm focusing now. You know, for a lot of people getting into this field, I hear like, oh, I'm going to get this, this, this certification. I'm setting for these like three certifications. And while yes, you can do that, I really don't recommend it. I recommend focusing on one certification at a time and one topic and really becoming an expert on that instead of just trying to learn the knowledge required to pass the exam to actually fully understand everything. So, uh, Annika, I want to get into cybersecurity, uh, in answer, in, in answer to your question, what interests people the most cybersecurity is a definitely a growing field and it's constantly evolving and more and more people, uh, you know, are going to be needed. So it's a great field to be in type of uh, focusing on system administration you know when i first got into the field um i kind of had the career goal of always i wanted to be a network admin or system admin um now i'm the director of network operations um which i feel i can surpass that goal uh but that's a i mean it's a great job role there's tons of great paying jobs uh, as a system administrator uh curious give me a ballpark estimate for how many port numbers you actually have memorized port numbers gosh <sighs> probably in all honesty like 50 different protocols you know i i i you know everyone focuses on trying to memorize port numbers like when i first started i did flash cards uh, when i was studying for my a plus studying those port numbers but the, the truth is, once you get into the field and get on the job, you don't need to memorize port numbers. Um, you're, that's what Google is for. You know, you're, you can Google, like, you'll forget, like, the other day, I totally spaced out on what S SFTP is, uh, which is port 22, because it uses SSH um, protocol. But I, for the life of me, I couldn't remember what the port number was. Um, just a simple Google search. That's the that's the realistic, you know, the reality of it. Um, these memorizing port numbers and stuff is it's going to help you pass your certification, but it's not going to help you really in the long run in your your career journey unless you're doing like coding and stuff like that um, and constantly having to you know reference port numbers, but again you'll 
it's not really required so should i continue the cisco track and go ccmp or try to get more knowledge on things such as linux microsoft uh cloud it really depends on what your end goal is um if you want to kind of live in the cisco world and uh go that track ccmp is a really good certification to have because it's nearly guaranteed job placement once you have your ccmp um but if you want to do more system administrative stuff linux microsoft and stuff like that those certifications are going definitely going to be more great or better more great better <laughs> Oh my god i didn't know you went live i wish i wasn't so late uh you're way better than tim tim casker yeah i i apologize guys i went so originally and my my friday live streams are normally at 8 p.m um but i got home to an empty house and i know uh so my my wife is out picking up two brand new puppies and uh they're gonna be home like right around eight o'clock so i know the house is not gonna be quiet enough for me to live stream so i decided to do a live stream early tonight uh that way i didn't have a whole bunch of noise and noisy kids with brand new puppies in the house uh so yeah i came on early but you didn't miss too much we've uh we've only been live for about a half an hour we'll be here for at least another half an hour if not longer angular thank for thank you for the two dollar super chat i want to say uh thanks your super chat is i want to say thanks your super chat is limited i don't know what that means like if super chat is limited super chat like it looks like I, you can send up to a 500 dollars super chat on my super chats i mean that's just what i'm seeing I wonder if i could super chat myself i'm gonna to totally try this Let's see if it works. Ha! <laughs> I just sent myself a super chat. <laughs> uh, but Angular, thank you for the two large super chat. That's so awesome. I really appreciate it. You can only do $2. Is that really what you guys are seeing? That you only can do a $2 super chat? Let me know like you don't have to send. like you guys don't have to send me a super chat but i'm curious like because i've gotten higher super chats before i'm gonna have to try this out ip config i see up to 500 yeah maybe that's just what you have available i don't know I just bought all the parts to build my PC except for a GPU. I'll install that later, but I want to record me building it so I can post it onto my online profile for employers to see. An i7, 11, 11, huh, 1170K, uh, 64 gigs of RAM. That's awesome, and absolutely record that. Um, you know, um, that's a great resource. And yeah, post it on your LinkedIn or create a blog about it um i i i've done several pc builds and like my computer's just off the screen you guys can't really see it but yeah um i i live streamed while i was building my computer so that was a lot of fun oh two dollars gives you 50 carriers maybe that's what he meant by limited oh that's that's a great idea ip config and by the way, IT config, I got your message. I'm not ignoring you. I just haven't had a chance to reply. After this live stream's over, I'll send you a message, IP config. Thank you again. I think my YouTube was broken. It's possible. YouTube ha has issues. It's all good. But uh, Angular said no, it was limiting you to $2. Interesting. Um, maybe that's a regional setting. I don't know. But anywho, thank you guys for your super chats. I, I really enjoy this. You know, I really appreciate it. You, you guys don't realize how much your support means uh, to me. Um, you know, I've really been trying to make this YouTube channel more substantial um, and integrate it into more of my life. Um, and that takes a lot of time. Um, 
so when you guys send super chats you're really supporting the mission and uh i just can't thank you enough so thank you guys really from deep down um if i was to tell myself years ago that i'd be here on youtube creating youtube videos and getting super chats i would be in total disbelief i mean uh i enjoy doing this so much so again thank you oh we can post videos on linkedin i was thinking about getting a wix so i can uh separate por portfolio too um i'm pretty sure like standard users like i can post videos on linkedin all day i'm pretty sure standard users can do that as well um but yeah um and then if you want to just create an inexpensive website like using a service like wix or um i mean i have a wordpress site um you can definitely do that It's funny, I went to your Discord just to post a random hello to your community, and that's how I found out that you're alive. Well, thank you, Blue Lantern. Uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, we went live early today, but uh, for you guys, every Friday we do a live stream in the evenings, uh, Pacific Standard Time, typically 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, but yeah, um, today is a little bit different, a little bit earlier. Uh, and we might be starting to throw in some uh, random live streams during the week. Um, I used to do like lunchtime live streams on my lunch breaks, and I might be bringing those back. So if you guys have any other questions at all, by all means, please feel free to drop them in the chat. I am here to help you guys advance your career in the IT field. Uh, you know, a common question I get a lot of the time is, should I go back to college or uh get a get it certifications and that the answer to that really varies depending on what your career path is um and really how you enjoy school and like what you want to do with your life um personally i'm a college dropout i i really don't i don't i school wasn't for me the school system just didn't work for me um college didn't work for me so i went by it certification route and i've been really successful in my career it, i don't think a college education is needed to be successful but um really just depending on what you're interested in can play many different roles so what kind of puppies are you getting uh they are norwegian elk hound uh husky mix so yeah we're actually getting a boy and a girl um i'll post some photos in my discord server later or maybe on twitter of the new puppies but uh we're excited uh we have two other dogs currently or three other dogs technically so we're gonna have a house full of kids and dogs uh but yeah it's um puppies are fun so uh, do you have guidance on WordPress or Wix profiles? Uh, are still pictures worth posting, uh, like screenshots and practice labs? Um, is that too simple to stand out? No, that's absolutely worth posting. Um, so back in the day, I used to actually design websites uh, using a program, you know, a content management system called Joomla, um, and then I late and then I switched to WordPress and like I use WordPress for like the, if you go to the bearded it dad.com that is a WordPress site um, and so like you can see what a WordPress site looks like I like WordPress I don't like Wix WordPress definitely gives you more customization and more control I feel like than like a Wix does Wix is a lot simpler to use and a lot quicker so that really is kind of up to you Would you recommend posting a uh, resume on LinkedIn profile in addition to work experience section, or should that be the same? Uh, I definitely recommend posting it in addition. The more information you can kind of put out there about yourself when you're looking to get a job in the IT field, the better. Uh, because different recruiters and employers will look at different information literally like one of the people i just did a coaching call with we not only worked on his resume but we worked on his linkedin profile and he started applying for jobs right after our coaching call and was getting quite a few interviews and then he got approached by a recruiter and uh he ended up getting a job making like I think he said like it was seventeen thousand dollars a year more than he was currently making in a senior level role um 
and it was all because we 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 optimized his linkedin profile to highlight his skills uh he had like his uh on the job skills and reworked his resume to really kind of simplify it to make it easier for recruiters and employers to find that information so um you know by putting the information out there and putting out more information um you're just only going to make it that much easier for the recruiters and employers to um find you and find out what they're looking for so Blue Lantern, uh, great. Thanks for the info. I'll look into WordPress. Uh, it's actually really hard to find examples of tech online profiles. When I look them up, um, almost purely get artist profiles. Yeah, um, that can be difficult. Um, most of the time I would look into like, try to find like tech blogs and stuff like that. That's what you're really kind of looking for. Um, I don't have any I know of off the top of my head. I could give you examples of, um, but yeah. I would start looking for be and you know if you're looking for references. Um let's take a minute and talk about struggles you guys are dealing with in the IT field, whether it's finding time for certifications or you know, you're applying for jobs and not getting any results back. What are some of the what are some of the struggles you guys have been currently facing? when it comes to the IT field. Um, I mean, or is it just you are currently working in the IT field and you have a different difficult employee to work with? What are some of the struggles you guys um, are currently facing? Um, and how can I possibly help you overcome them? Dedication is my biggest problem, slacking. You know, that can be tough. Um, burnout is huge in the it field i mean it is a major problem in the it field and um it can be tough to overcome it it can be tough to stay motivated sometimes especially like if you're looking to get into the it field and you're getting rejected a lot um you know um, or not getting a lot of calls it can be super hard to stay motivated um you know and it's tough but and, and you know what I, I dealt with that myself and my biggest advice um to you is just to keep your eye on the end goal so when i was getting into it my goal was i wanted to become a system administrator i knew i couldn't just jump straight into a system administrator role i needed to do my time on the help desk and while i was applying for these jobs that like i wasn't super stoked about i just kept my mind on like what it would be like to eventually be a system administrator, a network administrator. And that really kept me motivated. And then once I landed a job in the field, I got that much more motivation to continue my studies because I knew I wanted to get out of the job and into that higher level role. I wanted to work on networking equipment. Um, so I focused on that and it really kept me motivated. So that's my biggest advice to you is, um, you know, if you're, if you're struggling with being dedicated and slacking, find out what you like, what you want out of your career. If you're excited about making big money, focus on that and what is needed and required of you to do that. So. Finding a part-time job for me to do over the summer in college. That can be difficult. Um, you know, part-time IT jobs are kind of scarce sometimes. Um, but they're out there. Um, and if, if it's possibly just over the summer, you might want to look into internships um, or paid internships. Um, you might be a little bit more successful as a college student there, or maybe seeing if your college possibly has some work for you during the summer. A lot of times during those off seasons, those summer months is when IT departments can really get busy because they are refreshing computers. Um, you know, when things aren't in demand during the summer months and the load on the people on campus is reduced there you know it departments are often installing new computers and stuff like that so maybe talk to your local college and see you know if they're going to be hiring over the summer months um talk to your uh, uh, um, guidance counselor and maybe they have some suggestions and connections for you 
would you ever consider doing a tutorial as one of your weekly videos on building a profile portfolio I saw a guy who said he was putting out tons of resume gifts uh nothing until he did a portfolio uh it is actually on my list uh just unfortunately it's kind of far down my list um i'll bump it up a few spots um but I, it is actually on my list um creating a portfolio uh video on like like creating a um an online blog and stuff like that to help market yourself so that is a video i'm definitely considering uh just need time to research it and uh record it right now i need to get some bills paid down before i can really look into certifications you know um if, if you're looking for like those entry level certifications it really doesn't cost anything to study for those certifications at least be studying for them like there's tons of resources like professor messer um offers free a plus net plus and security plus courses on his youtube channel um there's other uh, channels out there like jeremy's it lab that um offers free um like ccna labs and stuff like that sorry my phone's gone off like 10 times so i want to make sure it's not an emergency okay um so studying for these certifications really doesn't cost a lot of money but um i mean at least start studying for him that way you can put them on your resume that you're studying for these certifications and you're making progress towards them i always feel like my ideas for portfolios are junior level school projects uh but maybe that's what they're supposed to be i am truly ignorant when it comes to uh to what comes what is considered decent sorry i cannot talk um you know there's just supposed to be a portfolio of like your career skills um it's supposed to be a place of what you talk about you know, your your skills and your knowledge and that's like something you can show off for it um you know um github repositories if you're into coding and stuff like that um can be super valuable literally i just did an interview with tom lawrence um of lawrence systems here on you know he's here on youtube he has a youtube channel and uh he hired some like he interviewed someone that he thought wasn't like he didn't think this guy was like the greatest and you know he um it, he was like on the fence about this guy and then he went to this guy's uh github repository and was just absolutely blown away about some of the contributions he had made to different projects and stuff on there um so yeah, it can be literally make or break your interview, um, having your information on display like that. Um, I already clicked on that one. My coworker doesn't want me to work. Uh, he doesn't, uh, he wants to look good, but he doesn't want to work. Uh, he's always bringing me down to make me make himself feel better. Uh, toxic workplace. You know, I've dealt with that. Um, when i i had a job as for a short time for with the school district and i dealt with several people like that there and um it's, it's horrible to deal with that um and if management's not willing to do anything about it or address the problem to be honest with you it's time to jump ship um the ship is going down it's sinking and it's it's time to go find another job um if management's not willing to do anything about that or address the problem that just to be 100% honest with you, um, toxic work environments like that um, and coworkers is the worst thing to deal with in tech. So, uh, do, I'm doing Jeremy IT Lab. I'm treating it just like college course, pausing videos and taking notes. That is perfect. Like that's the perfect approach to take with these YouTube videos because there's great information out there. Angular, it's a school district. How did I know? You know, I, I've I've known several people that work in tech in the school district, and I only know a maybe one that's actually ever had a decent thing to say about a school district working for a school district. Maybe uh, two. Okay, I know two people that have worked for a school district that had something decent to say, but they're not. A, they weren't even a public school district. They were a private school, like private schools type of thing, that had more money. But yeah. Um, I don't know what it is about school districts that just it's a it seems to create this toxic work environment and um 
I don't I don't know. There's, there's a lot of politics involved and stuff like that. And yeah, I, I'm not going to tell anyone not to work at a school district because everyone's experience and every school district is different. But just from experience and from what I've heard, I've never heard anything good about it. <laughs> so. Oh, if that's a toxic workplace, the pizza place I worked must have been a nuclear waste. It very well could have been. Network admin versus system admin. Which one may be good for introverts? Uh, introverts, uh, you know, it's it's difficult being in IT and being an introvert still. Uh, IT is such a customer service oriented job. Um, in a, and in an administrative position, you're definitely going to be dealing with people a lot more. Um, you know, it's tough because, you know, as much as you guys see me out here talking to cameras and stuff, I, I've, I've deep down, I'm kind of an introvert. I, I'm not a people person, to be honest with you. Um, but gone are the days of the basement IT department that smells like old pizza and dirty socks. Um, customer, or uh, I, IT is very much a customer service job and customer oriented position. Um, network admin and system admin are going to be equal in the amount of dealing with people. Um, I, I don't really have a recommendation for an introvert, you know, specialized position where you're not going to be dealing with a lot of people because it's going to vary organization from organization and how the organizational structure is. So uh, I'm sorry. That's probably not the answer you're looking for, but yeah, I work for LA USD. I like it, but yeah, I understand what you're saying, uh, but I can't leave my benefits, you know? Um, yeah, but I, I understand completely, but yeah. I've heard stories from friends who work for school district. Uh, he was so glad he's out. Yeah, um, I know plenty of people who work for school districts and uh, it's just always so political and uh, so, so difficult. So, yeah. Uh, if you work from home, you might have that old pizza smell in the basement, LOL. Yeah, um, you know, introverts, if you're an introvert, I think working from home position would be the best for you. The problem with working from home is it's near impossible when you're starting out uh, it is near impossible to get a working from home position when you're just starting out in the it field plus i i don't even recommend it you you need that in office experience um to really develop your career skills a lot better it's a lot easier to learn new things um in the workplace than trying to work from home um, but that could be a goal of yours. You know, you, the goal, your, your long-term career goal would be to work for a work from home position. Um, that, that is one of my goals is I eventually want to be in a work from home job. Um, it's just would work so much better for my family dynamic, but currently I can't do that as a director of network operations for an ISP. I need to be there in the knock, um, you know, Monday through Friday. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. Hopefully that wasn't too loud. <clears throat> is there an area of IT that is the most annoying for acquiring the skill for? My strong suit is the patience to learn stuff others don't have patience for. Um, you know, again, this is going to vary per person, I think. Um, It can be difficult sometimes. I think the most annoying, like most annoying to acquire skill, the skills for. No, I see. I don't think acquiring skills for anything is annoying because I'm, I like learning. I like advancing my skill set. Um, so I don't think, I don't think there's going to be anything that's really annoying in the IT field to like, I don't know. Does that make sense? Um, you know, there could be different difficult topics you have, like when you're studying for, like some, a lot of people struggle with like, uh, subnetting and stuff like that. Um, uh, there can be annoying skills you have to learn for a certain job position. That's really going to be a very, um, having patience to learn stuff that others don't have the patience for is going to 
really go a long way for you in in this field absolutely all righty well i think we're gonna start wrapping up this live stream unless you guys have any more questions to ask um you know the, i want the biggest takeaway to be that you guys if you are trying to get into the it field you need to just go out and start applying for jobs that is my biggest piece of advice for you guys um don't hold back don't think you're not good enough um it really it is it's really not as difficult as a lot of people think it is to get into the it field then once you're in the it field you can take the time to develop these extra skills to be able to level up your career um you know and start studying you know big pieces of advice I have for everyone is IT certifications aren't for your current job. It's for your next job. You're going to get your next employer. Um, so when you are trying to figure out what IT certifications to get, think about what you want that next job to be. Cause that's where those IT certifications are really going to help you out land that next level position. So, all righty. Well, I think we're going to wrap up this live stream again. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you, didn't get any questions answered or you have more questions make sure and drop them in the comments below um and if you're not already on our discord uh, the link for that is down in the description uh we're on there all the time we have a great community over there of people to help each other out and really advance your career skills so thank you guys for watching this video i hope you found it informative and until next time keep learning